In this video, we're going to be finding the initial monthly payment for a buyout package indexed to inflation, indexed to something called the Consumer Price Index, which is a government number that keeps track of inflation each year. It's kind of a long problem statement. Don't panic. Break it down piece by piece. So this senior executive who's evidently being let go is offered a buyout package because he's being let go. That's going to pay him a monthly benefit every month for the next 20 years. During each year, monthly benefits are constant within each of the 20 years. But then at the end of each year, at the end of each 12 month period, the monthly benefits are adjusted upwards to reflect inflation, to reflect that the fact that the buying power is going down with a percentage increase with the consumer price index, CPI, again, a government number that helps people keep track of inflation. You're given two things. First of all, that the first monthly benefit during the first year is R and will be paid one month from today, so it's an annuity immediate. And the CPI is assumed, for simplicity, to increase at a constant rate of 3.2% per year forever. Of course, that's not realistic, but hopefully it's not too far from being approximately true. At an effective annual interest rate of 6%, the buyout package has a value of 100000 evidently meaning the present value at time zero is 100000 the goal is to calculate R, that monthly benefit, during the first year. So yeah, it's kind of a long problem statement. Don't panic. Let's draw a timeline. Should we measure time in months or years? I think maybe initially months, but then uh, after that point, we might want to measure it in years. So this is initially in months. This is the first year, the first 12 months, and then the second year is the second group of 12 months, and then the third year, etc. There's 20 years total, so that would be 240 months at the end here. <clears throat> Payment of R at the end of each month for the first year. Then the value of the payment goes up, the nominal value, by 3.2% to be indexed to the CPI. 1.032 times R for the second year. And then 1.032 squared times R for the third year. The last year, the 20th year, it's going to be 1.032 to the 19th power times R. We might want to write down some other information. I is the effective annual interest rate. That's 6% or 0 0.06. We might need the monthly, the equivalent monthly interest rate. Let's call that J. That would be 1.06 to the 1 12th minus 1. Hope that's something that you know pretty quickly without having to think about it too hard. 1.06, the 1 12th power would be approximately 0 0.08333333. So it looks like J is this number here, a little less than half of a percent per month, 0 0.00486755. All right, that might be good to know. Um, let's go ahead and change our perspective now to years. How could we do that? What I'm going to do to solve this problem, ultimately it's the present value that's 100,000, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the future value of each year's payments immediately after the last payment, find the future value as an annuity immediate. So for the first year, we're going to evaluate the future value at time 12. For the second year, we'll evaluate the future value at time 24. For the third year, it would be at time 36, etc. For the last year, it's going to be at time 24. Let's focus on the first years first. Uh, the future value at t equals 12 for that first year's C series of payments is going to be, think about it here, r times s12 with this interest rate, 0.00486755. And a formula that's 1 plus j to the 12th minus 1 over j. Um, 1 plus j to the 12th is the same as, as 1 plus i. This is going to be 1.06 for this problem. So minus 1 is going to be 0 0.06. So I want to take 0 0.06 divided by j. This is j on my calculator here right now. So I'll just do the reciprocal of j times 0 0.06 and this is multiplied by r, so I get 12.32652839 times r. 
In terms of R, that's the future value of the first year's payments evaluated at time 12. Uh, for the next year's payments evaluated at time 24, it's going to be 12, this thing times 1.032, etc. So I get a, I get an equivalent se sequence of payments at the end of each year. Now let's think of these numbers as being in years. 20 years here. So I'm going to get the, the 12.3265. I'll just approximate it here. 12.3265 R right there. Then I would get 1.032 times that at time 2. Then 1.032 squared times that same thing at time 3, etc. At time 20, I'll get 1.032 to the 19th times that same quantity at time 20. And now if I discount these all back to time 0 using the annual discount factor, and set it equal to 100,000, that should allow me to solve for R. So let's see. We're going to have the uh, present value of this entire thing at time one, time zero is 100,000. And that's going to equal 12.32652839 R times V where V is the annual discount factor. Let me go ahead and write it up here. V is going to be 1 over 1.06. The reciprocal of 1.06. That is V right there, about 0.94339. Three. Let's store that now and register 0. We're going to need that. Uh, the present value of the second year's payment is this whole same thing multiplied by 1.032 and multiplied by another factor of v. So I could write it as 12.3265.2839 r times 1.032 times v squared. The next one would have the same thing times another factor of 1.032 times another factor of v. The last one is going to be 12.3265.2839R times 1.032 to the 19th times v to the 20th. All right. I hope by now that you recognize this as a finite geometric sum. And, you know, rather than memorize some formula for a situation like this, or even like this, which, which you can do, it's maybe better in my mind to memorize the formula for the finite geometric sum. And here's the way I remember it. This is going to be the first term, which is this thing. And maybe I should, let's see, well, let's just leave it like that initially, 12.3265.2839 rv times um, 1 minus the common ratio to the number to the power equal to the number of terms. What's the common ratio? We need to multiply each term by 1.032 times v to get the next term. So the common ratio is 1.032 times v. That's the common ratio of this geometric series. That's what we need to multiply each term by to get the next term. How many terms are there? Um, you can keep track of it with the power of v. There are 20 terms here. 20 payments. Divided by 1 minus the common ratio, 1 minus 1.032 times v. All right, so let's see here. What's 1.302 times v? v was in register 0, so I'm recalling it there. That's v times. 1.032. Okay, so that's 1.032 times v. Maybe I want to store that in register 1. Let me also write it here. This thing is 0 0.97358491. And that's also this thing that's getting raised to the 20th power. Okay, uh, let's go ahead 
and do the bottom first. Let's subtract this from one. So there's what's on the bottom of the fraction. Maybe I'll store that in register two. You might want to write it down too, but I'm going to remember it's stored in register two. Now let's go up to the top. Um, this thing, 0 0.97358491, was stored in register one. Recall that from register one. There it is. Raise it to the 20th power. Subtract from one. Multiply by. 12.3265 Also multiply by V, which careful is stored in register zero times recall zero. Um, and now divide by what was in the bottom, what was in register two. Divide by recall two. Looks like we get 182.5064707 times r. Don't forget the r. And the r is what we want to solve for. So now divide both sides by this number. I'll take its reciprocal and multiply times 100,000. And it looks like r is 547.93, or about 548. And that is the correct answer. We might, we might also want to know, note that because of this, uh, we could figure out, for example, what the executive is getting by the monthly payments for the last year. Again, um, 1.032 is the growth factor. If I take 1.032 to the 19th power times R times 547.93, by the 20th year, each month the executive is getting about $997. Of course, these are nominal dollars because of inflation. Buying power is going down. In real terms, the executive is just breaking even, so to speak, if inflation truly follows the 3.2% per year.